Kyle here from allmeterreviews.blogspot.com. So I'm here to do at least as quick of a review of a couple albums. First being Pure Reason Revolution's album Above Cyrus, which I mentioned in the video blog yesterday. So I've listened to it, I think, three, three and a half times now. Uh, just came out last Friday. This is the fifth album. I guess I was going to quickly show. So the follow-up to 2020's album Eupnea, which I did revisit this the other day. I'll add about a few comments about it. Of course, my, my fandom, unlike... I mean, a lot of people caught on to them with The Dark Third, but I've noticed a lot of people later can't. But I, I was I caught on to them initially, actually, was with, with this guy, actually. Cautionary Tales for the Brave, which came out in December of 2005. Um, of course, The Dark Third, which is the two versions. I don't... My vinyl, I didn't grab The Dark Third vinyl. I have that on vinyl. American version, UK version, and then I have... Not here, but I have in a different spot the the, the double version, um, and then of course then that was in two thousand six. So this is two thousand five. I also have this piece, which is like a sampler from a label in the UK, which has their song. Oh, what is it called? Which one is it? Oh, The Apprentice of the Universe. Um, it's called uh, the cassette. Played pop tones, yeah. It's like a pop tone label sampler. Um, but then they followed up Dark Third 2006 and 2000. They did Live at Near Fest, which I have. I think I have. I don't have a CD. I think I do have. But um, uh, more Vincent Omnia, which I need a new copy. Of my con the condition of this is not great. That was 2008 and 2009. Hammer and Anvil. It was 2010 actually. Actually, this was 2009. My bad. I got the years mixed up. I this is 2009, it came with DVD, a more Vincent Omnia, and then Hammer and Anvil was 2010. And they broke up the next year. I, I did buy, gosh, that's one, one of my rarities to worry about, it's over here. I did purchase their final, which at the time I thought was their final single. It wasn't this Victorious Cupid... No, this isn't it. This is a different sampler. Anyway, I also have one of their singles somewhere. This is a different piece. Anyway, this I'm just trying to do a review. This is sort of the, the, what they led up to. They, they broke up in 2011 and came back finally in 2019, did some shows, and then released this. So the new album, of, uh, Above Cyrus, 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 I think it's Cyrus, just came out, and... I like Eupnea, but Eupnea and this, it was like sort of return to their the Dark Third sound. Um, this album does sound like a very much of like the sister album to, um, Eupnea. Um, however, having revisited Eupnea just the other day and now this again, I'm not quite sure I like it as much as Eupnea. I did pre-order that I should be getting a vinyl copy sometime in the next few weeks. Hopefully it could be this week, could be next week. I, I got some email the other day, but it's coming from Europe. So, um, my favorite tracks... You know, like Notes Reviews did a review last week, before it even came out, actually. He was stressing about Scream Sideways being the kind of stellar, you know, standout track. And it is. I mean, the title track to Eupnea is probably the, the stellar track on that record. That's this album um, style title track. It's very kind of dynamic. It's the most dynamic and not overproduced track on this record, I think, in some ways. It has some of the heavy riffs, but... It's well, it's very well composed, and it's like a suite of parts of different movements. It's ten minutes, so um, um, with the lush vocal harmonies from Pure Rhythm Revolution, you know. Um, the other one I'm probably in. Well, I'm, I'd say two now. I haven't listened today. The one that precedes that, Cruel Deliverance and Lucid. Both those tracks have a similar kind of warm, kind of dreamy, astro folk, psychedelic, you know, um, with. They have some heavy riffs in there, but they're not. Over, they don't overstay their welcome. So now I'm just gonna get to those are my favorites. Phantoms I like, but it's like Dead Butterflies, Phantoms, and New Kind of Evil. Even in our prism, all those tracks that 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 it's really the same riff, and they've used the riff like that on Brendan Bastard's Morning Morning. They used it on a couple songs on Eupnea. It seems to be kind of, it's, it's, only, it's that riff and sort of the production being kind of hot. It's almost slightly in the loudness wars. Not to the extent where it's, it's unlistenable, but it's a little too much. It's a little overproduced for me when they use those heavy riffs. And it gets to be industrial. It's like Nine Inch Nails, that kind of 
element. I, I know that I think they're fans of Nine Inch Nails. In fact, this record and parts of the, these two records had a, had Nine Inch Nails elements, but I didn't. It didn't bug me. I don't know. I still like them. I still like moments on all those songs, even the new kind of evil, new kind of evil. But um, they used some samples, which they did use samples. I was remembering on. I think almost all the records they've used samples, almost except the Dark Third, but they seem to be more featured on here. Chloe, as a vocalist, I've always kind of felt like she's always just been a complimentary vocalist with Purism Revolution, although on Eupnea, I think, she I can't remember what song it was on Eupnea, she seemed to be um, stepping up a little bit. I can't remember if it was Ghost and Typhoons or Beyond Our Bodies. I'm going to listen to this again. I, I, I've slept on, even though this was my number two record in 2020, I, I didn't listen to it nearly as much as I probably should have. I was just sort of disinterested in listening to a lot of music that year. Um, but I think it finished right behind Dirt Robbins on, on my list that year. So I just think on the new record, on, on um, Above C Cyrus, it um, she's a little bit, she's there, but, you know, it's John and I guess... Uh, Greg Jong. Now, that's the other thing you can say about, well, Greg Jong shows up on this. He's a full-time member now on Above Cyrus. He was an original member, or at least on the Dark Third, he was a full-time member. But um, he lives in Portland, Oregon now. He's from the UK. Um, but I, his, vo his voice and John's, if I had to tell you who is who, I mean, I know John does the majority of the lead vocals, but he's on there. Um, but Chloe, while she is featured here and there, not as much. I mean, a lot of the best songs they've done, she's not necessarily doing isolated vocals. A lot of her vocals are double, triple, quadruply layered. It's just that kind of wall of sound, not wall of sound, but sort of that extra harmonies, extra vocal tracks. Um, and, and it's just a complimentary sort of harmony style. And, you know, I thought when she was used on this, and then, of course, listen, she did Tiny Giant, and I forget what the name of the other group she did before that. She was just, it was isolated, her voice. It was different from PRR, of course, but, so. Um, but as a whole, I'm, I'm liking Above Cyrus. I'm going to have to give it a little more time, but I can't say, it doesn't have, I mean, one of the quotes on Rate Your Music I think is somewhat accurate. It's, it's their least melodic and their heaviest record, and the balance between the two isn't quite as well achieved as maybe on, on some of the records, including on this record. But, um, I mean, it still has a lot of good moments, and I'm still going to listen to it, and it's certainly not a, not a bad record at all. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, I, I think, I think uh, they're kind of just doing what they want to do. I don't know, there's not like strings or something like that. There's things that I, I guess I've enjoyed in other Pure Reason Revolution albums that aren't necessarily on this record, um, but... I think that that's what they're trying to do, and they're trying to emphasize some of those guitar riffs a little more. I don't know. Um, because you listen to the Dark Third, and it's just like that perfect balance between the piano, and the pi and they use piano, it just sounds great. And it's like they, There's one or two Queen moments, which is I like, you know, because um, they just use those vocal harmonies. That's a huge part of their sound, the lush vocal harmonies. So, Anyway, if you heard Above S Cyrus, what's your take on that? Um, you know, what, how does it compare to the rest of the record? How does it compare to Eupnea? Uh, be curious about to hear from that. But uh, be sure and subscribe. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.